Yeah, welcome back to DXB today. Great to have your company this evening. We're working on your concentration, at least I think that's what we're working on at the moment. Yeah, how do you achieve greater focus? And our next guest uh, is someone who's going to help to that end, mindset coach, yoga instructor, who supports corporate professionals in overcoming burnout, but also managing uh, the S-word stress. Please welcome to the show uh, the founder of uh, Kai Well Co. It is Kai Simmons. Kai, thanks for being with us. Thanks, happy to be here. Really kind of you to come on down. Um, I always think that when we're talking about mindfulness, given the fact that it is such a buzzword now, how many people actually know what mindfulness is? Do, do, we get to a stage that mindfulness or our understanding of mindfulness is sort of changing in definition at the moment. How do you define it? Yeah, so mindfulness is being able to just focus or slow down the mind. Mm. And so I think a lot of people, they hear the word meditation mm. and they're like, okay, I need to meditate. I need to do these things to calm and overcome stress, which is, yes, we hear that a lot. But meditation is an extremely advanced practice mm. and it's a form of mindfulness, but it's not the only form. Mm. And that's the biggest kind of um, myth that I am just kind of trying to debunk is that there are so many different types of mindfulness and it's about finding the right one that works for you and the right teacher to help you kind of understand it mm -hmm. because that's that's part of it. It's a practice. And whenever you're doing something for the first time, at least for me, you know, you got <laughs> the beginner's phase where you're just like fumbling <laughs> with it and it's going to be difficult. So I see a lot of people, they, you know, someone will recommend, oh, why don't you try yoga? Why don't you try meditation? Why try this? And then they try it and it's really difficult they have no support, they have no guidance, and they're like, oh, I can't do this, this isn't for me. And I, and I get it because they're not maybe doing the right type of mindfulness practice and they don't have the support, which again, whenever you're doing something for the first time, getting support is so much easier to do it in the beginning and then later on, you can practice it yourself. So yeah, that's definitely. So okay, how would you say that mindfulness and productivity go hand in hand and how can you use mindfulness to become more productive? So I think what is happening a lot, we're talking about stress, we're talking about anxiety and burnout. When we're getting into these phases, and I know you know, you're talking about chronic stretch, stress over a prolonged period of time, when we're constantly stuck in stress, our productivity goes down. Our, our stress uh, kind of elevates all of these different parts of our body called our cortisone, our adrenaline, or, or what I like to call it is stress juice. So your body gets filled with this stress juice and that makes it just like, so you're not able to focus. You're just kind of like in this fight or flight state because when we're stressed, stress is a physiological response to our body. Our body thinks we're in danger. Mm. So if you're trying to, I don't know, um, do a task at hand and you're stressed, the first thing your mind is gonna say is like, get out of that stress, get out of the danger. So that task, forget about it. So what we need to do is we need to get rid of that stress juice. We need to come back to this kind of balanced state. And the way that we can do this is through different mindfulness practices. And that's something that I always like to teach um, my students and my clients is that what's happening is that stress is that, again, like I said, physiological response. It's activating something in our body called our sympathetic nervous system. And I know it's a big word, so I always shorten it. Sympathetic, SNS, or SOS. SOS means we're in danger. We need to fight. We need to fight. Something is wrong. But what we need to do is we need to bring ourselves into our parasympathetic nervous system, PNS. So the way that we do that is through different mindfulness practices. We activate something in our body called the vagus nerve. One way we can do it, just like you were showing earlier, deep belly breathing, breathing into your body, that's activating the vagus nerve. So it's taking you out of that SNS fight or flight state back into that parasympathetic nervous system when you're calm, when you're relaxed. And then that productivity increases, that focus, that creativity. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I feel like my best ideas come in the shower or when yeah, I'm yeah. driving, when there's no traffic, you know? When you're in this calm state, your brain, your mind is so much more productive and also creative. So that's what I like to sh share is the importance of mindfulness, mm. is bringing uh, how, you back into that state. How often do you do these practices throughout the day? Is it like, do you, do you advise to do them um, periodically during the day or do you wait till the end of the day and then you kind of do a big practice to kind of like offset the stress. I was doing it just before I came on to now. Like, right? okay. I, was, I was getting a little nervous, excited, yeah. so I was doing some deep belly breathing. I was doing some movements to kind of bring myself back into that parasympathetic nervous system. So you do it as much as you need it. So whenever you come into this stressful situation, you have these tools, these practices. And again, I think it's not about stress being the bad guy or not having stress. It's how do we go from stress back into a relaxed, safe state? So it's not like, oh, I need to avoid traffic. I need to avoid stressful situations. You can still, 
um, face them, but with a lot more tools, a lot more strategies and practices so that you can not stay stuck in the stress. Mm. So as much as you need, <laughs> always, even for me, yeah. I do it all the time. So Kai, I have a habit of over committing myself, over scheduling myself. I'm, I definitely get stressed out and anxious quite a bit. One thing you said though was before addressing all these tasks, like if I have a really long to-do list, I'm like <gasps> panicking. Yeah. So. And my immediate thought is, well, let's, let me see how many things I can finish to get them off my list. But you don't think that's, <laughs> I'm, I'm registering here that you don't think that's the right way to go about it. I think, um, I'm, look, you and me, I think we're speaking the same language because I get myself into these situations quite a, quite a lot. And I always try to remind myself one thing at a time. And when I do, and I feel that stress response going up, that's when I come back and I need to take a step back before I do anything and connect back to that parasympathetic nervous system. So maybe it's breathing. Sometimes it's singing. Singing is also activating the vagus nerve, also shaking. So movement is also a way. So for me, whenever I get overwhelmed by long to-do list, long things, I take a step back, I regulate my nervous system, and then once I'm a bit calmer, I approach it and I, trust me, you will approach it with a different mindset because you've shifted from that stressful danger, oh my gosh, to like, hey, okay, I'll take a beat through. first. Yeah, exactly, exactly, yeah. Claire, at the time on this occasion, is it just me? Or is the irony lost on anyone else that the, 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 where we go for our mindfulness and relaxation is the vagus nerve of all things, you know? <laughs> yes, wow, yes. you know, that's the last thing I think of vagus, but you know, yeah. there we go.